I like reading books. I like reading. I like teaching. In fact, you probably have realized this by now. You probably heard this before. We are the sum of the books that we've read and the people that we hang out with. There's probably a lot of truth to that. So I want to bring you some of the best books that have changed my life. And you guys know I like to talk, but I'm going to do my very best to keep them in short, concise, bite-sized little videos so you can take them, consume them, and run with them. So today we're going to be covering this little green book called The Ten Distinctions Between the Middle Class and Millionaires. It's by Keith Cameron Smith the top 10 distinctions between millionaires and the middle class. You've heard me reference this on many of my other videos. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I want to touch on a couple different things here. And what I'll probably do is go through, maybe I won't hit all 10 distinctions, but I'll hit some of the, the ones that really impacted me and got me thinking different because I want you guys to have this, and especially as Christians. And, and my man Keith, shout out if you're watching this, somebody knows him, tag him. Uh, my, man, my man Keith, Cameron Smith. I always like when people throw their middle names in there. Like I'm trying to rebrand. How can I be Travis Lee? Travis Lee Peters, the TLP. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Um, in some spaces, they call me Travi P, and I like that. What what we have to do is we have to be able be the type of person who reads a book, reads something. It actually takes me a really long time to read through books. In fact, I don't finish most of them. I do not read books anymore and, and with the goal of completing them. I go through books and I'm hunting and I'm searching. And I used to, it's weird, we get like book guilt where it's like, I can't start that one until I finish this one. And I still got so much more, I haven't finished it. And no, no, it's okay, it's all good. I'm gonna let you off the hook. You are released, you don't have to do that anymore. Let's just find what we need. And the reason it takes me so long is I'll read a paragraph. I'll read a sentence. I remember I opened this book and during the, introduction. I highlighted one sentence and I thought about it for like a week or two. I talked about it everywhere I went. I had discussions about it with my friends. So let's hit this here. And one of the things I want you to see is that most people focus on what they don't want and never set goals for what they do want. That was me. Let me read it to you again. I want you to think on this. Most people focus on what they don't want and never set goals for what they do want. Let me take a little swig, a little coffee while you think about that. I have started and stopped so many business ideas, projects, and different things because I started having this thought of like, oh, I, but I don't want that. Oh, I don't want... Uh, angry customers and headaches and doing support. Oh, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. No. The problem with that is it moves your focus and attention to what you don't want, the things you don't like, the lack in the situation. And when you do that, it keeps you from taking moves and moving towards what you do want. It's completely different. It sounds subtle. It was one sentence, but it produces a completely different outcome. If you focus and set goals and map out the plan on what you do want, specifically, you might get super specific on what you don't want, but you need to get super specific on the life and the finances and the business and the stuff and the things and the uh, lifestyle in every area, the marriage, the parenting. What do you want? You need to get clear and let's map that out. The what you don't want will, will fall to the wayside because you're focusing on what you do want. You'll get what you want without the things you don't want, the difference is if you focus on what you don't want, you will travel this way and you won't get to what you want. But if you focus on what you do want and make the goals to get you there, you'll get what you want without the stuff you don't want. Think on that. All right. So distinction number one, millionaires think long term, the middle class thinks short term. This one got me. It's the very first one in there, but for me, it was probably the most powerful one, to be honest with you. Society can be broken down into five groups of people. The very poor, poor, middle class, rich, and very rich. Each group of people thinks differently about money. This is very true. The rich think way different than the very rich. The very rich are on a whole nother level. That's where, like, we need to get around these people. They think different than we do, and it's awesome. 
Very poor people think day to day. Poor people think week to week. Middle class people think month to month. Rich people think year to year. And very rich people think decade to decade. If you guys remember in a, a, a video I did recently on this book, The Dopamine Detox, it actually says the same thing using a Harvard study as its reference point. That they literally, the number one success indicator between those who are wealthy and those who are not are their ability to think long term. With that book, what they were talking about is how we've been misusing dopamine is causing us to think short term and be short term minded. And that is a hindrance and a problem to us building wealth. Well, here's him. He wrote this first before that book. That was reiterating what he said here. I think that's very interesting. I have not, if I'm honest with you, I don't. I haven't been thinking decade to decade. I'm still kind of working on it. <laughs> like when it says the middle class think month to month, I'm like, oh, man, that's what, that's what I always think. And part of that for me personally is when I think about business and, and um, revenue, sales, income goals, things like that, I always think monthly. That's just what we've kind of always, that's how we've always spoken. I make this grant this much a month. My goal is to make this much per month. But in a subtle way, that's keeping me in the middle class mindset. That's something I need to examine and be like, okay, I know we all talk like that and think like that, but is that actually incorrect? So as funny as it sounds, um, just working on thinking quarterly, man, I make this much every 90 days has been helpful. And even going to like, man, if I, if I do this business deal or this business project, how much could it make me in three years? Even that's just a little bit hard for me to grasp and get to. So I'm working on that because I want to learn to think like the wealthy and the very wealthy. The primary goal for the very poor and the poor is survival. Now listen to this. Oh man. The primary goal for middle class people is comfort. We're just going to think on that for a sec. The primary goal for very poor and poor people is survival. I just got to pay my bills this month. I just got to pay my bills this week. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay those bills? And you just stay stuck there. Some of you watching that, watching this, may have been living that way. Maybe your parents and their, and their parents have lived this way. Survival, just surviving, just getting by, barely making it. Paycheck to paycheck, scraping by. Maybe less than paycheck to paycheck. But I think most people are going to resonate with this line. The primary goal for the middle class is comfort. Ugh, that's so painful, especially as Christians. If we're trying to do big things for God, I mean, comfort's not where we can settle. I've been there many times, so many times, and subconsciously, where I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I'm even doing it in, in business where it's like, man, I haven't really done anything new or big. Or maybe I launched something new. I did about the same sales amount, revenues that kind of all my other stuff does. But I just haven't gone bigger because I'm, I'm cool with my comfort. I'm comfortable. We can easily pay our bills. We got big financial margin. It's all good. But I'm not striving for the next level or pursuing something or on the offensive, being proactive. And that's where I like to live. That lights me up. That fires me up. You're, if your main goal is comfort, you're probably not building anything great for God or doing anything great for the kingdom, most likely. The primary goal for the rich and very rich is freedom. That's where I'm going. That's me. That's my goal. The reason that the very poor and poor people seek to survive and the middle class seeks to be comfortable is because they have a scarcity mentality. You know, if you guys don't want to, I mean, just reading the two paragraphs I've read you makes you want, should make you want to go buy this book. All right. It's that good. They have a scarcity mentality. They believe there's not enough money for everyone to have enough. And I know some of y'all believe that because I read y'all's comments on my YouTube videos. <clears throat> but the rich know the truth. There is enough money for everyone to have more than enough. What you believe about money has everything to do with how much money you will end up making. If you have a scarcity mentality, then you will seek to survive or just have enough 
to be comfortable. If you have an abundance mentality, you will seek freedom. The old saying from the Bible, seek and you will find, is true when it comes to your finances. You really do get what you look for in life. If you seek to survive, you will. If you seek to be comfortable, you will be. If you seek freedom, you will find it. Oh, man, it's so good. Listen to this one again, man. Just listen to this. Put this on repeat. Hey, make sure you subscribe to this. You guys don't want to miss the rest of these chapters that I've got coming out for you because we're going to compile these lessons and you are going to be able to think like the wealthy when you do. The power is in long-term thinking. It can and will make you rich if you make it a habit. The people thinking day to day, as very poor people do, is where you'll find day laborers and street beggars. They typically earn less than 10000 a year. Thinking week to week, as poor people do, living paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet, poor, poor people typically earn 10000 to $25,000 a year. Thinking month to month, as the middle class do, they are more concerned with monthly bills, such as mortgage payments, car payments, credit card payments, and other revolving accounts. The middle class typically earn 25000 to 100000 a year. Thinking year to year, as rich people do, is where you start to learn about fiscal responsibility, financial literacy, and investing. Rich people typically make 100000 to 500000 a year. Thinking decade to decade, as the very rich do, is where you'll find business plans that reach far into the future. It's where you'll learn how to legally avoid taxes or pay less so that you can keep your money working for you. It's where people learn how to pass on their assets and their legacies to future generations. Very rich people typically make well over $500,000 a year. Most very rich people consistently make a minimum of a million dollars per year. We'll wrap up with this. The longer you can stretch your thinking into the future, the richer you will become. When I first started thinking year to year, my income really started to increase. I asked myself questions like, how can I double my income this year? How can I legally pay less taxes this year? As I've seen this principle of my long-term thinking, of long-term thinking in the lives of my mentors, it's challenged me to look further into my own future. He says, goes on, he talks about how um, he's got plans that reach 20 years into the future with businesses and things like that. I heard one guy talking about, he felt like God challenged him and said, how can you impact this earth for the next 300 years after you're gone? Man, you make different plans when you ask yourself that question versus how can I pay my mortgage this month? If you start asking yourself, how can I impact the world 300 years after I'm gone? You're still going to pay your mortgage. That's still going to happen. But man, you build something that's amazing, not just survived and not just eked out a meager existence while you were here on earth. And see, the reason I want to get this stuff into you guys, especially you Christians, is I feel like most of us are just living the exact same lives as, as, a, as the world, as unbelievers, without power, without authority, without legacy, without building anything. We've got every advantage. We've got the Holy Spirit inside us. We've got the kingdom living in us. It's alive in us. We've got authority and power. And we can do something great with our time here on earth. I want to make sure, I want to light a fire under you, that you're thinking bigger and that you're not actually building a life you don't want. See, a lot of us are, are just working on building and making money and climbing the corporate ladder and trying to get to six figures, which please don't think six figures a lot. That's still middle class. Six figures a month and we can start talking. But six figures a year, it's not enough to even shake a stick at, to be honest with you. I want to make sure you are spending this time on earth and not leaving anything on the table. You're maximizing your time here and you're doing the big things that you're able to do. You're maxing out your full potential. God put a lot in you, but I think most Christians are doing 2%, and I'm not exaggerating, 2% of what God's put in them. Because most of us are just stuck in this rat race cycle of going to a job, getting climbing the corporate ladder because we've been there for a decade because we were too afraid to go start our own business, which you have wanted to do this whole time anyway. You get locked into a job. Now you've got a big mortgage payment. You've got two new car payments. You've got student loans. 
paying for that job that you don't even like anyway. And then you got kids tuition and you got all this different stuff. And you're like, I can't quit my job now because, you know, my bills are eight grand a month and I only make 10 grand a month. I can't quit because if I go somewhere else, then I'm going to have to start from the bottom. I can't start anywhere else making that much money. I got to start at the bottom and work my way up from there to 10 years. Like all those different things. We're stuck. God will get you out of that. A new way of thinking will get you out of that. A new boldness will get you out of that. It's possible. I've helped and coached countless people now to escape their day jobs and get into the thing they really want to be in and then make more money in that thing than they ever made, like double, triple, quadruple what they made working a day job. But we got to be thinking things like this. we got to apply stuff like this. If you're still thinking week to week or month to month, you're going to be seeking comfort. And that's exactly what you're going to get. But if you can think year to year, five years to five years, decade to decade, then you can start to act like the very rich and get the results like the very rich. You're going to make different plans. You're going to ask yourself different questions, which is going to lead to different behavior. This is powerful stuff, guys. This helped me a ton. Middle class people want instant gratification. I was like that for many years. And that part really hit me because, you know, we've got, if you guys don't know, we have the other YouTube channel, Passive Income Engines. And we teach how to create passive income through some unique uh, crypto investment strategies and a couple things like that. Really cool stuff. Pays really well, makes a lot of money. Um, really cool investments. Like, if you haven't checked it out, there's a link below and check it out. But I say that to say is I found myself making instant gratification choices, having to come back to this book with these investments to go back so I could think longer term. Because a lot of these investments, they pay you out daily. And so I'm just thinking, like, okay, how much is it going to make me per day? Well, I found that actually caused me to not make the best decisions. If I was thinking, how much will this make me? Even in 90 days, I would have made better decisions. But because I was thinking, how much does this pay me daily? I felt like I was making short-term decisions, looking for instant gratification, and it did not get me financially to where I wanted to be. But now that I'm thinking further out, I'm making financial and investment decisions differently, and I'm just now starting to reap those new rewards financially of thinking this way. I mean, it's so cool. If you think, how can I pay my bills by the end of this month versus how can I double my money this year? And you see the difference in long-term thinking. You're going to come up with different answers. And those new answers are going to actually get you the financial results you want. Because if you said, how can I pay my bills this month? Well, man, I can come up with a lot of answers for you. You can go mow some lawns. You could go sell something. You could sell your computer. Then you don't have a computer. You could go mow lawns, but then you might miss out on that family time is what you really want anyway. I could say you could sell a kidney. You could, you know, I mean, there's like all kinds of ways if you want to pay the bills by the end of the month, but you're trying to double your money this year. You might be thinking, I could start that business that I've been dreaming about for a decade. That would double my money. I could go and I could increase my value. I could learn how to run advertisements on social media, then go to my boss and say, hey, on nights and weekends, I want to do this and run business run ads for you guys, it will make you more money. And in exchange, I'd like to get paid X amount. Well, by the end of the year, maybe you've doubled your money. I mean, it's just, it's things like this, those types of questions. We had that other video about asking yourselves empowering questions. Those questions that you ask yourself are going to determine those results you get. But the wealthy ask themselves different questions than the poor and middle class do. I love you guys. If you want to hear more about this, make sure you like and subscribe. You don't want to miss any of the new segments and new things I got coming out. Hope you guys like the new office setup. We're painting the whole house. So I'm kind of just redoing some things. I got the camera set up a little bit different so you can see my desk. I think it's cool. Uh, sometimes I drink coffee. Uh, I got it off screen, but now I'm just bringing it on screen because, you know, it's casual chat. A little, a little coffee, a little hangout. We just do it big. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. And if you haven't already, head over to financialincrease101.com. I got a free guide showing you how to escape the budgeted life and dominate your finances. It's a great little course. It's going to help you. It's free. Head over there. Grab that. I love you. See you in the next video.